Okay, all right. Yo, yo, there's already four people here. People are starting to tune into the live drives slightly before the 60 second mark, which is nice. Starting to get a little bit more traction there. Four of you here, five now, back down to four. I think we can start at four. I don't mind starting at four. Uh, I need to go this way, don't I? Forgive me, guys. Let me just get my bearings as I realize where I'm going to my first and only meeting of the day. Loving this job, man. Long may it continue, hopefully. Hopefully. Still, it's just a temporary thing. It'll be up at the end of the year and I may need to go back into schools next year, but if it stays like this, life is pretty sweet. I'm just gonna wait for the first comment to come in because there's still four people. As soon as we get five or six and the first comment comes in, I'll get started and I'll tell you exactly what is going down in this particular video and what is going to go down with some of the live drives after this. All right, six of you here, that's more than enough to start this live drive for today. So with all the live drives and, and the constant news and the updates that we have, I figure it's, it's important to bring different elements of content to the channel and it's important to always know when it's it's still time to enjoy the engagement and the communication with you all one thing that i want for into worldwide is to always be a place of engagement and to always be a place where we can come and talk and chat and it doesn't always have to be negative it doesn't always have to be reactionary to the news it doesn't always have to be reactionary to positive news either so what i was thinking last night when i was like oh should i push it up put the camera on tomorrow on the way to work i thought What's something that you can talk about that's positive? What's something that you can start doing for your channel again that will at least keep people engaged and, you know, it's it's sort of up to you, Anthony, to distract your subscribers. Distract your viewers from, from the bullshit, which is what I'm pretty good at doing. So today's choice of topic comes to me based on the trends going on in Napoli at the moment, where we know Luciano Spalletti won the Scudetto and will no longer be there because he's not there at the moment obviously Rudy Garcia is but the rumors are coming out that it's Antonio Conte that's going to take over at Napoli and if that's the case well all I needed was that piece of news to think to myself hold on we've seen this before essay <laughs> and I thought to myself where was I and what was happening at the time where the news broke that Antonio Conte was going to manage Inter and I remember, I remember the morning that I woke up and I read the news that Spalletti is most, most likely going to leave. But before we get to that day, let's talk about the sequence of events that led us to Spalletti's departure. Now, when Spalletti took over, it was, it was an exciting time for us as Inter fans. And I really want you guys to comment on this video afterwards and let me know if you enjoyed me, you know, backtracking through the through the um, through the vault, through the intervault. And that's what I'm gonna keep doing through a lot of these videos. I'm gonna go back to different moments that I remember, different moments that were significant to me, and we'll see who can resonate. So when the news came through that Spalletti was managing at Inter, people started to get very excited. Not necessarily because we had a world-class pedigree serial winner coming in, because we didn't, that's not what Spalletti is. But the stability was there. The ownership, was full frontal for Suning. The Tahir handover and the Tahir regime was supremely handed over then. It was done. Pepe Marotta was very much so at the helm and he was calling all of the shots. Spalletti did exactly what he agreed to do for us. He got us back into the Champions League and put us on the point where we were ready to take that next step. Unfortunately, Luciano Spalletti was not the right man to help Inter take that next step. And his departure was nothing short of gentlemanly. It was absolutely amazing. 
We get to the Champions League the first season after that amazing final day victory over Lazio. We struggle even more the following season to get to the Champions League after having to go up against Empoli with a great chance. Icardi misses a penalty to make it 2-0. Empoli make it 1-1. Raja Nangolan scores. And then Empoli pepper the goal, but Inter prevail. Some heroics from D'Ambrosio, Handanovic, Skriniar. All three of those players are not there now. And then the elation and the pure joy that I felt after Empoli. You know, I, I dare say... And I've told some close people like this before, like I think Christian Rivas or maybe even Mario, that the feeling of qualifying for that Champions League against Lazio and Empoli, I felt it more in here than winning the Scudetto under Conte because winning the Scudetto under Conte was clockwork. We knew we were going to win it as soon as we beat Atalanta 1-0 on like match day 31, 32, whenever it was, or 29, 30. I remember we knew it. But with the Champions League qualification, the immense amount of suffering that comes with it and the immense amount of, of backtracking that you have to do if you can't get that fourth spot. Imagine under Spalletti if we didn't get that fourth spot. Would have Conte even come in? Spalletti leaves as a gentleman and later surfaces that for the last week he had been leaving training to go and visit his dying brother. He was driving hours on the road and then driving back. He did not inform the squad. He did not inform anybody but a couple of very close family members and a couple of very close people at the club that was go what was going on because he did not want it to distract us from our goal. I'm a big fan of Luciano Spalletti as, as a human being. As a manager and as a coach, I like him, but I'm not going to put him on a pedestal with the rest of them, the rest of the world-class managers. I don't think he's up there. I don't think he is one of the bottle, as Mourinho would say. But as a human being, he's a he's a class, a plus, world class. The morning that the news was starting to surface that he was going to leave and Conte was coming in, it was not official. It was not official, but it was done. It was done. It was happening. And I remember just pulling up into a little car park near my old job, my old uh, place of teaching, back in my old era and pulling into that car park. The same car park that I'd pull into two, three times a week in the morning before work. Sometimes to just flick the last results. So I got a bit of an emotional breakdown before I got to work. And sometimes to just record a little bit of content. And you guys will remember on the previous channel, I used to just always pull up and just record with the phone out. Just pull up anywhere I was. And then the day after that, it's about 2.30 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Sydney time, on a Friday. And if I'm not mistaken, it could have been the last Friday of the school term. I think I would have been going on holiday straight after because I was at my best mate's place. And I wasn't just there kicking back to say hi. I remember I was there 3 o'clock in the afternoon, popping some beers, getting ready for a good night. So there was definitely an element of relaxation and an element of, of positivity and energy around me. And I remember doing that reaction, putting the phone in front of my face, in my mate's backyard, in front of the outdoor pool going, Antonio Conte is it. He's the one. It's done. Antonio Conte is my manager. He's our manager. Because that's when Inter Media House released the graphic, the image of Antonio Conte's face. Spalletti into Antonio Conte. That was where the real success started. It wasn't where the ground was laid because the ground was laid by Luciano. The foundations were laid by Luciano and Beppe and Pierre and Steven. You know, let's not forget where we started getting back to being competitive and getting back to the top level. That's where it started. But when Conte comes in, it's a different mentality. It's a different regime. And the players are on board from day dot. From day dot. They are on board. And why wouldn't you be? You know you've got the physical elements there. You know you've got the technical elements there. All you need is for the drill sergeant to kick you up the arse and make sure that you're really scared of failure. Really scared of the idea of not doing your job properly. And that's what most people were, they were scared. 
Because I don't see players that are scared at the moment for us, unfortunately. I remember watching the first few training sessions. Hello, Amy. Nice to see you. Sorry, I haven't responded much to this chat. But I'm going to keep doing these sort of videos as well, in between the news and whatnot. And I'll get older. I'll probably do another one about how I started watching Adriano and Bobo Vieri. I'll probably do one about how my, my early Champions League games when I work, so different games that I work up to watch Interplay. And I'm enjoying it already. I'm enjoying focusing on something that doesn't, that's not going on right now. So Conte comes in. We start well. I remember we pumped Lecce 4-0. Kandreva scores an absolute banger. We start very well. Like we're starting, we just win games, win games. A couple of slips here and there. But throughout the season, we know that we're going to push Juve to an extent. But we're probably not going to take their crown. We're not going to take their crown. We know it. And I know we only lost the title by one point that season, I think. But it was virtually wrapped up by about match day 34. And it was mathematically wrapped up by, I think, match day 36. I think match day 36, we were like minus 7, minus 8. And the second season is history. The second season is where we can confidently say that we as fans were all rewarded. For our efforts and we as fans were all rewarded for our patience with our club yeah there should still be a reception so i remember it clearly i remember it like it was yesterday i mean it wasn't even that long ago to begin with to be honest but that season was definitely a season where we saw the full strength of our squad and the full strength as to what a squad like that can do. So once again, Spalletti into Antonio Conte. It was a very, very, very positive move for us and a very, very, very positive moment for Inter and everybody involved. I think that after the second season of Conte, we knew that we would be in for a scrap after that in terms of stability-wise, which is why I'm still very happy with Marotta and Ozilio's decision to bring in Simone Inzaghi. Antonio Conte's reign after taking over from Spalletti will be deemed as a huge success after winning our first crown since 2010, but also, of course, left a sour taste in the mouth when we left. Plenty of highlights under Antonio Conte, plenty of games that I remember because I just moved, we just moved out from our area that I grew up in in my whole life and moved into a new area with my parents and I knew I wasn't going to stay there long. So I enjoyed waking up early, watching games and doing re match reactions like in the forest, um, in the bushes out near my parents' house. It was very nice stuff. Um, I remember Lautaro Martinez coming on against Parma and scoring a match winner after Icardi had bombed so many chances. I remember us being down 1-0 to Bologna and we score an equaliser and then Stefano, Sen Stefano Sensi gets the ball and does this amazing half turn in the box and gets clipped. Lukaku makes it 2-1 and we win that game. I remember be being 4-1 uh, up against Sassuolo and winning the game 4-3 after panicking. I remember coming down from 2-0 against Milan in that derby, that famous derby after winning it 4-2. Brozo. Alexis, De Vrij, and Lukaku scoring the goals. I remember being extremely excited with signing Christian Eriksen over the fucking moon, actually. <laughs> and I remember him starting to reach his, his, um, his best efforts with that free kick against Milan. I will always remember the games in the back end of his second season where we just kept stockpiling the wins on our way to our goals. I'll remember the 1-0 against Atalanta like it was the, 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 the dueling moment. I'll remember the 1-0 win against Napoli after the penalty to Lukaku. I'll remember Damian's goals against, I think, Cagliari and Hellas Verona to make it 1-0 with about 15 minutes left, 16 minutes left. And it was, it was just awesome. It was awesome stuff. And I'll never forget watching the Crotone match live with Mo and Uncle Sharma and seeing Christian Eriksen bust that goal in. And it being absolutely fantastic all round. 
Thanks for joining Quizo. I want you to watch this video back. All of them that I do like this will go for about 15, 20 minutes, and I'm gonna keep doing more of these, more throwbacks, more positive things to talk about so that we've always got something to chat and engage with as well. There's never been a better time to be a subscriber to this channel. There's never been a better time to join and become a channel member. If you support the content and support how much time that I'm putting into it, please, by all means, become a channel member so I can keep doing more and more content for you guys as well. So your job now is to comment on this video. What are your favorite memories of the two years of Antonio Conte? But more importantly, how do you remember? How do you remember the transition from Spalletti to Conte? Where were you when the news broke? Where were you when it, we started to realize that, you know, making the top four was Spalletti's last gift to us? Um, yeah, and that's why I'm here, Quizzo, to help you recover from that weekend. So try and ignore that and try and think about some better times. I'll be back with another live drive, um, if not tomorrow, the next day, and I'll try and think of some other classic memories or trying to think of something else positive that I can contribute to this channel and to the live drives. You're, you guys just need to keep tuning in, okay? Thank you very much, guys. My name is Anthony Forza Inter.